Chris, what is our fifth main topic today? This one comes from Imran. While promoting Black Adam, Dwayne Johnson said he and his team have been fighting for six to seven years to get Cavill in Black Adam. He went on to say that the old regime at WB were doing everything they could to keep Henry from returning as Superman. It wasn't until the new leadership took over was when they were finally given the green light for Henry to make his comeback. Why did Walter Hamada and the old WB administration not want Cavill back? What was their beef with him? All right. Thanks a lot for sending that in. And you know, look, do we really have to, we don't have to go into it all. You guys know that I am one half of the greatest bromance in Hollywood. Me and Henry Cavill. Henry's not aware of it, but uh, yeah, he, he and I, bromance. I love Henry Cavill. I love him as Superman. He's my favorite Superman. Man of Steel's most underrated comic book film of all time. Blah, blah, blah. You've heard me say it a million times. So I was, I am obviously very, very happy that we're getting Henry Cavill back. It also makes me very happy knowing why he came back and how it became possible that he came back. This is specifically what, oh, uh, look at that. I remember my favorite thing is one of the girls from IGN was writing about this video. This is one of the most iconic videos ever put on YouTube. Henry Cavill building his own gaming PC. And I remember the greatest line ever. One of the, the female writers over at IGN wrote, I watched the first 30 seconds of Henry Cavill building his gaming PC, and I'm pretty sure I'm pregnant. Um, yeah. It It's just like, like, come on. That's just science. <laughs> that's, that's, that's just science. So I'm really happy. So what did Dwayne The Rock Johnson actually say about the situation? Well, this is what he said. He said, I feel that this serves not only Black Adam, I'm talking about Henry Cavill come back, not only Black Adam, but it serves the larger DC universe. But more importantly than that, it takes care of the fans, or specifically John Campia. Uh, and that's what you want your lead foot to be. So yes, phone calls, meetings, but man, this was years, man. Six years to get that done. I'm going to say that again. Six years, we first started about this, and they kept saying no. Now? That leadership isn't there anymore at DC at Warner Brothers, and we usher in a new era of the DC universe. So basically, one of the what what basically Dwayne the Rock Johnson is saying, yeah, we've been trying for years, but Warner Brothers just kept saying no. No, 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 no. Then comes in David Zaslav and the new ownership. And one of the first things that we talked about before, remember we told you guys that David Zaslav likes Henry Cavill Superman. He thinks Superman is a pivotal character that you need to build a shared cin cinematic universe around, all that kind of stuff, which got me, you know, crossing my fingers and my toes and doing my little wiggle, hoping, I'll let you imagine what that wiggle looks like, hoping that that would mean that Henry Cavill could be making his triumphant return and could be coming back. And now Dwayne The Rock Johnson confirming, yeah, under the old leadership, they said no. New leadership said yes which makes me extremely excited. You know, for a long time, Rob, we talk about the Axe of Zaslav. And, and look, I, I, I know it's unpopular, but I think he's doing a lot of things that they need to do to ensure the long-term survival and success of Warner Brothers right now. If some people disagree. That's perfectly fine. But we said, look, it's easy, though, to take the Axe to something. What's harder and what takes much, 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 much longer is to build the stuff that we're going to see. And we're still a year or two away from seeing what that is going to be. But the first thing for me is Henry Cavill is back because of David Zathlab, because the new leadership is there. And that makes me extremely happy. I don't care what anybody else thinks. Anyway, uh, Rob, you hear about Dwayne Johnson. And by the way, I should throw one other thing too. The former leadership at Warner Brothers hesitancy to move forward with Henry Cavill as Superman, I don't believe had anything to do with Henry Cavill. Nope. Like when you ask what beef did they have with Henry, it was none. It was just that in their estimation, this iteration of Superman wasn't working and they were going to have to change things up. It had nothing to do with Henry, but it, it was all about the character and what they wanted to do or not do with him. So with the new leadership in it, I think Henry being there marks a lot of stuff. Anyway, Rob, what do you think about the situation? Well, I think you just said something that is really insightful and probably absolutely correct in the, in the, in the sense that the Superman movies that Henry Cavill was in, Matt Steele, Batman v Superman, Justice League, not Zack Snyder's Justice League, but the theatrical right. release Justice League. Those are three movies that in the estimation of the people that ran the studio underperformed for various reasons. 
None of those reasons were because of Henry Cavill. Exactly. And I think David Zaslav walks in. He's got no attachment because these people, you know, every time a movie comes out and underperforms, the head of the studio is is sus all of a sudden. Like, well, is, is, does he know his job? And they thought that Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice was going to make a billion dollars. And so these movies underperformed, all three of them. And they, I think they look at, well, we have to, let's blame somebody. They always want to look for who's to blame. And they blame the people that were involved, like who was in the movie, even though actors, they're told to say a role. They come on camera and they're given a script and they, Henry Cavill was a great, great Superman. And I think no one, no one, you might, but he killed somebody. No, the character of Superman is portrayed in the film was written to kill somebody. And Henry Cavill played that part the way he was written. He was great. He, he had the physicality. He looked the part. He had the sensitivity and he still was a badass. It didn't work out. David Zaslav rocks, walks in. He's never been questioned. He looks at Henry Cavill. He probably watched Man of Steel and thought, this is great. I love this movie. Why, why are we made, where's, where's the sequel? And then Dwayne Johnson calls him and says, hey, listen, I'm, I've, I've, I've had it with WB saying no to me. And just Zaslav says, say no more. Yeah, I, yes. I'm sure that's exactly what happened. I, yes. I, I bet something like, yeah, because why not? You want him to show up at the end, and and the thing is, who doesn't like Henry Cavill? You know, you even go back and you watch Man from Uncle. Now that movie didn't do well. That movie's a lot better than people give it credit for. And he I was great love in Man it. from Uncle. He was great in it. I mean, as can't Napoleon really make Solo, a sequel anymore. N uh, no, <laughs> not, no, you can't. But not, but not I mean, you can. You just recast some things. You're gonna have to recast. Yeah. But you Army, know what, John? Yeah. This shows what true leadership is. You can look behind the 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 obvious and see things that are might not be so obvious and make decisions. That's true leadership. And he did something. I mean, Zaslav, got to give him all the credit in the world for this one. And by the way, it makes me love Dwayne the Rock Johnson, who's already my second favorite movie star. It makes me love him even more because knowing how persistent that he was to get Henry Cavill back as Superman, that even when he was being told no by the studio for however long, he didn't give up. He went to the new ownership of the studio, found an ally in it. The fa very fact that we talked about the other day when he said, you know, Black Adam is the most powerful force on the planet, but the most powerful force in the universe is soup. And I'm like, see, Dwayne Johnson gets it. Anyway, Chris, you hear about this whole thing. Mm -hmm. What stands out to you? I mean, winning cures everything. So I understand why the old regime was recalcitrant to bring in Cavill again, because I don't think you could separate those two ideas from an executive standpoint. Yeah. Right. Of no, that that those films weren't well received. So we got to just do a fire sale. Everything must go. From and I those. understood that. I yeah. Did. Me too. And so it totally makes sense. So I before I cast blame at Hamada and be like, this is bullshit. And he should have brought in Cavill. I get it. I understand that. But the problem has been the DCEU, not Cavill. So it is really, really great to see that they are going to go, hey, not everything in these movies was hot garbage, all right? There were some great shining moments and some things that didn't work. And one of the things that worked was Henry Cavill. You can't ask for someone who looks more like Superman ripped from the pages. I mean, you truly, truly can't. He does such a wonderful job in the role. The fact that you've got one of the biggest movie stars in the world who is so bankable, who's so great at producing, who understands markets really, really well, saying he wants this guy in his franchise, that's going to also increase you back in him, you know? So I think this is great all around. And good on you, Dwayne. Good on you for sticking to your guns. You know, John, you said something last week about how he knows when it's time to go when you're in wrestling yes. and so when it's and how Dwayne has always played that up correctly he can look at talent a, a person and understand where they belong in the hierarchy of whatever he's doing like if he's on camera with somebody he can point and go because whether you like his movies or not he's very good at picking co-stars and people that he can yeah. act opposite yeah. of and i think he looks at henry even not just because they're friends and have the same manager he's like I want to face off against that guy because he knows exactly what he looks like facing off against somebody for an audience. This is also kind this whole move is also kind of like a big rebuke to the former ownership of Warner Brothers cuz what this is this is Dwayne Johnson David Zaslav looking at the old ownership and saying the problem was not the pieces that you had. The problem was what you did with those pieces. Mm -hmm. The problem wasn't Henry Cavill. The problem wasn't this iteration of Superman. The problem was, that's not the problem. It's what you did with them or didn't do with them. That was a problem. And we're going to show you whether they do or not. That's another question. But they're saying, we're going to show you that you could have made it a lot better. So I, I, whether they accomplish that or not, we'll see. But I love the steps they're taking. Question is for you guys. 
What do you think about this? Dwayne The Rock Johnson is saying for years it was just him banging his head against the wall and Warner Brothers wouldn't budge to give it to him. The new leadership comes in, they say yes, and here we are. How do you feel about that? Whatever your thoughts are, jump down to the comment section below and leave your thoughts there. Hey guys, we want to take a second to thank the sponsor of this video, Masterclass. You guys know we have been sponsored by Masterclass and we love them here at the John Campia Show for giving us in-depth information on a wide variety of topics from the world's best experts. With Masterclass, you can learn from the world's best minds anytime, anywhere, and at your own pace. You can learn the art of filmmaking from James Cameron, improve your cooking skills from Gordon Ramsay, or learn how to make compelling YouTube videos from Marquise Brownlee. With over 150 classes from a range of world class instructors, that thing you've always wanted to do is closer than you think. I was recently watching through the independent filmmaking course by Spike Lee, and I found it fascinating that not only did he cover the broader topics like working with actors, but he also gets into finer details like working with a cinematographer and how to properly audition a DP for your project. It was fascinating. So guys, I highly recommend that you check it out. Get unlimited access to every class, and as a John Campia Show listener, you get 15% off an annual membership. Go to masterclass.com slash campia now. That's masterclass.com slash campia for 15% off masterclass.